This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to every single one of you, including Johnny Hernandez, High Tech Oki, Jim Hart, and our brand new patron, Edie. On this episode of DTNS, Charlotte Henry explains whether messy mania is good for Apple TV. Plus, TikTok wants to sell you merchandise. It's now a good time for that TikTok. Read the room. Come on. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, July 25th, 2023. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. And from studio, I don't even know what it's called. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And joining us from the Addition newsletter, a great addition to the show, Charlotte Henry. See what you did there. How are you, Mm. my friend? Oh, it's good to have you. How are you? Um, I'm thrilled to be back. It's been far too long. I know. We're going to start a regular new thing on the show today. It's It's very exciting. exciting. A little crossover, a little collab. Um, It's like, yeah, it's like when like the Marvel characters collide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you're the Nick Fury and I'm Captain Avenger. I don't know. Take it. It's a universe of some kind. (laughs) Exactly. I'm taking it. Uh, Well, it will get messy. We promise you that. But let's start with the quick hits. Apple recently announced the release of its Vision Pro developer kits currently available as a loaner that will allow devs to develop and test apps. Along with a Vision Pro, developers will get help with device setup and onboarding, check-ins with Apple experts for UI design, development guidance, help with app refining, and two additional code level support requests for troubleshooting code issues. The company makes it clear that the developer kits are Apple property. They need to remain in the secure workspace where they are shipped and are accessible only to developers approved by Apple. ChatGPT's app is now available in the Google Play Store in Bangladesh, Brazil, India, and the United States. Users in other countries can still find the App Store listing and then choose to have it installed as soon as it's available. Separately, OpenAI updated its post from January about AI Classifier, which is a tool meant to help detect whether text had been generated by a large language model. Uh, It didn't work very well. OpenAI wrote, as of July 20th, 2023, the AI classifier is no longer available due to its low rate of accuracy. But OpenAI says it's still working on other ways to detect if text is machine generated. Stanford researchers found that Mastodon, the decentralized Twitter-like social media platform, has a substantial child abuse material problem and that the open posting of child sexual abuse material or CSAM is disturbingly prevalent. Researchers scanned the 25 most popular Mastodon instances and in two days found that 112 instances of known CSAM across 325,000 posts with the first instance showing up uh, just after five minutes of searching. Concerns about safety on decentralized networks such as Mastodon, are growing because these networks don't use the same approach to moderation as mainstream sites. Researchers suggest that networks like Mastodon employ more robust tools for moderators, along with photo DNA integration and cyber tip line reporting. Several pieces of news to note if you follow the chip industry closely. The European Union just gave final approval to its Chips Act. Uh, They will spend 43 billion euros to try to increase Europe's share of worldwide chip production from 10 percent to 20 percent by 2030. The United States also wants to increase its share of chip production, but the Semiconductor Industry Association estimates that of the 115,000 chip jobs expected to be added in the U.S. by 2030, 58% could go unfilled if current decree completion rates stay where they are. There's just not enough people graduating with the degrees needed to fill these jobs. TSMC, in fact, just delayed its U.S. plant opening in Arizona because of difficulty finding skilled workers. Fewer U.S. students are studying STEM subjects, and people from other countries who are studying in the U.S. 
are leaving uh, a lot of times because they can't get permission to stay. Speaking of TSMC, it's worth noting that it is taking routine precautions right now at its Taiwan locations due to Typhoon Doksuri moving toward the island. And uh, we've had flooding and, and rains cause problems before. They don't expect it to cause a problem this time, but it's um, you know something to keep an eye on. Couple of hardware release notes, uh, releases to note. Uh, Sony released its WF 1000 XMS earbuds Monday, thanks to TechnoMensch for the reminder on that. Sony also added two proprietary processors and dual feedback microphones that use bone conduction mm -hmm. and updated high performance, uh, high performance drivers to 24 bit audio processing and also added new noise isolating earbud tips. They're also smaller and lighter and available for $300. DJI also announced the Air 3 drone, which packs in a dual 4K cameras, two of them, that can both shoot at the same time. The Air 3 also has an omnidirectional obstacle sensing and 46 minutes of flight time. The base package starts at $1,099 and is available now. All right, folks, if you haven't run across Timu or Xi'an yet, you likely will soon, maybe even just in a commercial. Uh, they're both Chinese-based retailers selling discounted items with quick delivery. Now, your mileage may vary if you like these services, but they're immensely popular. Timu has been the number one free non-game app on both the Apple and Android app stores for months now. Uh, so it probably doesn't shock you that the Wall Street Journal reports TikTok wants to get in on that and is going to launch a new e-commerce business in the U.S. in early August. Uh, Sarah, how's this going to work? Well, so TikTok already offers a way for third parties to sell goods, but customer service and profits have been kind of disappointing. So the company plans to centralize things. Supposedly, TikTok will store and ship items for merchants, as well as handle marketing, transactions, logistics, customer support. Then the TikTok shopping center will have channels where you can view and buy stuff from a single page. Merchants will then be from China to start with plans to offer other markets later. All right, Charlotte, TikTok is under pressure in the U.S. It's mm. even banned in, in some states, uh, <laughs> specifically yeah, been the state of Montana. There. So. So, so what do you think the, how do you think this whole retail thing is going? Well, it's really interesting because first of all, TikTok, we know, has always been interested in building this shopping capability, right? Hasn't it? Uh, already there's facilities for summer, you know, creators to sell stuff directly. Um, there's shopping events that TikTok itself has held, that kind of thing. But this is obviously a really big extension. And I wonder if launching something like this is going to get politicians from all different countries taking another look at the company. Yeah. Uh, it kind of gone quiet, hadn't it? And they're, then they're, something big like this... I yeah. wonder if people are going to start getting interested again. Yeah, the uh, the momentum seems to have slowed down for uh, for for pressure on TikTok in the United States. Worth noting that they already launched similar services to what they're going to do in the U.S. in August in the U.K. and Saudi Arabia. Mm. Uh, it did not seem to cause too much of a flutter uh, in the U.K. or Saudi Arabia, for that matter. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe this will be fine. Maybe this will go under the radar. It might. I, I doubt it. I mean, if you look at that Wall Street Journal story, it's saying TikTok aims to quadruple the gross merchandise value or total transaction amount of goods on the platform. We're talking serious money here. It's about they wanted to get it to twenty billion this year, uh, from and it was less than five billion mm -hmm. last year. So we're talking serious money here, which tends to usually attract attention, doesn't it? Yeah, it usually does. Uh, the the other thing is this is hard. Uh, it, they want to go to 20 billion. Will they be able to get to 20 billion? They certainly have the users for it. They've mm -hmm. got 1.2 billion monthly users. Uh, Timu is is somewhere between 100 and 200 million. So it's it's certainly an option for them, but they're trying to do what Amazon does with logistics. Right. And Amazon has been doing that for 20 years. Uh, T and, and TikTok is not done the logistics part of this. They have not done the warehousing. They have not done the delivery yeah. part of it. They have not done the customer support part of it. Those are the new things they're taking on with these plans. Sure. 
the one thing they do have though is the creators and the creator economy and yep. i'm really interested they got the sales see, channel <laughs> exactly exactly and i'm really interested to see how they're going to get creators into this plugging products through the TikTok is selling because obviously that's what they way they think they can get this this revenue and the merchandise value up is presumably because the uh, the creators who use TikTok are going to going to promote things. Do we know if um you know some TikTokers are going to get you know get a cut of it? That will be also an interesting mm-hmm. way if there's some kind of affiliate thing the way Amazon does it for example. There's a it's quite a lot of questions. I'm very interested to see how this plays out. To be honest, yeah, I. I mean, I have no doubt that TikTok can get people to buy stuff, uh, sure. whether whether it will be in the amounts they want and whether they will have issues with delivery. Uh, again, they're limiting themselves to Chinese manufacturers right now. So selection is going to be limited to Chinese manufacturers. Pretty wide selection, but still. Um, and that, of course, comes with other human rights and logistical uh, worker rights issues as well, doesn't it? Which is all these kind of things crop up. And back to the start of our conversation, tends to attract uh, attention from lawmakers as well. Although- Timu and Sheehan have so far escaped that kind of government uh, regulation. Yeah, there was a bit of a controversy about Sheehan and getting influences there and stuff like that. But yeah, I think yeah, TikTok's yeah. already in the firing line of where those companies aren't, though. We bought like two or three things from Timu. Uh, one of them was a total bust. Uh, one of them was... What was not it? Not exactly. Oh, it was these these uh, bags that you're supposed to be able to compress your clothes so that they store better. Ah, uh, and they just no, leaked. Yeah. Uh, the other one was a, was a pump that worked fine. That was fine. And then the other one was a a small electric iron, which worked as advertised. It just didn't end up working as we thought it should. So that one's not on Timu, but they're all cheap stuff. It's like little Daiso kind of cheap stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, if you hang out on Netflix a lot, you might notice that it is replacing its downloads tab with a new My Netflix tab, which the company describes as a one-stop shop tailored to you. The tab still shows downloads, but also adds shows that maybe you've given a thumbs up to, movies that you've saved to my list, trailers you've watched, reminders for upcoming releases, and a list of in-progress and recently completed viewings. The tab has already arrived on Netflix's iOS app and will come to Android in early August. So, Charlotte, uh, you know, knowing what you know about Netflix, does this seem easier or more complex? I have to be honest, I'm not a big user of the downloads tab or like I don't generally download content onto, you know, I tend to use Netflix on my TV is the long and the short of it. Uh, I have used it a few times, you know, when I'm traveling or something, but I tend to just stream content. So it's not going to make an immediate impact on me. I guess Netflix thinks it's making life simpler for users. You know, everything you want to watch, everything that you have watched, I guess, goes into one place and that makes life simpler for its users. And I, I kind of get that. I kind of see what they're doing. If you think, for example, of a podcast app, all your podcasts are yeah. there. You know, some of them have you've downloaded, some of them you haven't, and you there's different ways to differentiate that. So I guess it's moving in that kind of way. And most users prefer simplicity, don't they? This, this sort of strikes me as uh, Netflix saying, here are all the ways that you might watch something (laughs) yeah maybe you you had like a you know a a slight curiosity maybe you even you know completed a part of a series that you you know you could go back to um we want you to watch things on netflix yeah um, I'm, i'm looking at those three tabs right now uh on my home tab i have new releases top picks for tom uh continue watching uh i go to the my netflix tab I have new releases, uh, my list, uh, trailers you've watched. (laughs) I go to new and hot, uh, coming soon. Everyone's watching things for you. Like it's just three different versions of the same way of letting you see stuff. This is getting a little, a little silly. Like these categories are not good categories. They're very messy. It's get, Yeah, it's getting all a bit tangled up. You want things for clarity. Have I started this? Have I finished this? Have I downloaded this? And I guess putting it in one tab makes that easier to find everything you might possibly be interested in. 
then why have the other two tabs at that point? Mm. Like, I don't know. There's slightly different things in different ones. Thankfully, the downloads are still at the top of the My Netflix. Yeah. I'm just going to have to remember to go to My Netflix to get my downloads next time I get on a plane and I've downloaded something. But yeah. by the way, I just so you know, Sarah, I keep, uh, I think you should leave downloaded on Netflix so that on any given Always. plane ride, Always. I've got yeah. one. You've got, your, you've got your it's safety like go to every time. Every yeah. time. Need it's a few like a survival kit. <laughs> exactly. exactly. All right, folks. Uh, Samsung's doing its first ever Galaxy Unpacked from Seoul, South Korea. It's home on Wednesday. Uh, so there's never been a better time to join the Android Faithful. Android aficionados Ron Richards and Huen Tui Dao bring you Android Faithful, a podcast devoted exclusively to Android news and information. You can catch it Tuesdays, 8 p.m. East Coast, 5 p.m. Pacific, and subscribe to it right now at dot androidfaithful.com you know the w, w, w. so we're going to start a regular feature with charlotte where we talk about the intersection of tech and media based on her podcast and newsletter the addition so Woo-hoo. welcome to additional Woo. conversations on dtns yay do you, see what, do you think they see what we did there yeah, I I hope they did. They're smart. They know. It's a very smart audience. So they get it. Yes, I'm really excited we're doing this. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, this time we're going to talk about football superstar Lionel Messi coming to Major League Soccer in the Who? U.S. and uh, what that has to do with Apple TV. Have you heard sorry. of Messi? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I know. He's like the biggest. <laughs> He's, uh believe the, the word goat. <sighs> Sometimes he is the guy. I've called it. Goat, goat, goat would mm-hmm. apply. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Greatest I'm of all time. Named it. Yeah. yeah, I think. Now, he is. MLS, Major League Soccer. Uh, we, we're very proud of it in the U.S. You know, having had indoor soccer for many years and uh, the North American Soccer League back in the '70s. MLS, however, is not on the level of the Bundesliga or Premier League or La Liga or the others. Um, so. With Messi involved with the MLS and MLS involved with Apple, Charlotte, can Apple get international viewers to plunk down money just to watch Messi? Charlotte, what do you think? Uh oh, we have we have we have had an we have had an issue. Uh, kind of messy. Get yeah, it? Uh, we we promised get that this this uh, this segment would be messy, so. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're we're delivering on that promise. If, if anybody doesn't know, the idea was that uh, they brought Messi to the Miami franchise in Major League Soccer in the U.S., gave him a cut of the Apple TV revenues as a sweetener for the deal. Everybody was trying to get Messi in their league. Saudi Arabia has a league that has been getting a lot of the big stars uh, like Ronaldo. And, uh, and, and so it was, it was a big deal for Apple to get that cut, uh, to get that, to give that cut, or I guess for MLS to give that cut of the revenues to Messi in order to get him here to where they could promote him and get people to sign up for those subscriptions. Um, now it's, uh, it's, it's something that is certainly going to help in the United States. Everybody in the United States wants to see Messi, Right. I certainly do. Um, I don't know, Charlotte. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So I think I think really uh, what we're talking about here is how much should it cost, right? Um, Thirteen dollars per month, forty dollars per season. Um, you know, is 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 there a better way to do that? No. Not really. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you care about the sport, then you know, are you going to pay this, or do you feel like for whatever reason uh, it's egregious? Yeah, it's hard. I think people don't always take on. You know, it can be not so just uh, extensive. You, you know, hold just go along together and not just actually, you know, make a you know, make a plan, make, make your, um, you know, your activists to make, prove your point. And then suddenly the day's gone, you know, just not taking it out, only taking it out on one thing. Do you think this is going to get, 
people internationally to to watch Major League Soccer to pay the the amount that would get them this because the because Apple's made it worldwide, no blackouts, everybody can get it. I I think so. It's certainly you know a tempting way to encourage people because you know as a way to actually see him. You know, normally I don't think the American football was that encouraging, but you know it's. I think it's about thirty-five pounds for the rest of this season. So that to watch him a few times every week is, you know, quite quite exciting, really. Will, will you, you know, do they, it? Have you done it? I don't think I will. <laughs> but, mm. well, that, so it's so theoretically that's very exciting, but yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, like you, you, you just feel like it's um, cost prohibitive, or. Mm. No, I mean, I think it's a decent price. It's just there's so much other that, you know, other you don't even spend another, like, 50, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, they've done a really good job, and they've got it for 10 years. So Apple have got themselves in a good position. They won't have Messi for 10 years. He's not going to play for another 10 years, uh, is he? No, that, they might not go, but they... So you know, what are they going to do for their good. next trick, then? Yeah, hope others have turned up. But Ram- it's going to be really interesting Ronaldo. to see. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they use this to build for for the future. Also, you know, I know that, uh, you know, the rest of the world is rolling their eyes uh, when I say like, you know, the U.S. is not like we like soccer. All the kids Mm -hmm. play soccer, but Mm -hmm. like it's not a thing here yet. It is on some level. And, it's you know, a bigger thing is, than it used to be. And amongst people who like the MLS, they're already writing the email to to angrily tell us it is a thing. But 100%. it is not yet on the same level as the NFL or NBA, right? It, totally, it doesn't feel totally. like it. And, you know, it was quite interesting that Apple decided to be the company that, you know, took this on for 10 years. They bought the, the, rock, the rights for 10 years, which obviously... You don't do if you think it's coming, everything's turning around straight away. Yeah. Uh, and you don't, I, I don't know how much Apple had to do with cutting Messi in on the revenues, but I'm sure they were in on the conversations. Well, my the reporting, some of the stories is that some of the subscriptions is going to Messi. He is being paid for some of the income, you know, a chunk of how. But is that coming out of Miami's cut, MLS's cut? I I, I imagine it's not coming out of Apple's cut. I don't know if it's coming directly from TV Plus or from Miami, Mm -hmm. but that's the, uh, he's obviously, he's benefiting, is said, from people who sign up. Yeah. Uh, Well, uh, if you want to get that coverage that Charlotte is talking about, get more on this, by all means, uh, uh, get conversations like this in the addition newsletter. Look for it online in Substack, wherever fine newsletters are purveyed. Thank you, Charlotte. No, I'm so glad to be doing this. We're going to have fun. Well, if you, Charlotte, me, Tom, or anybody out there have moved recently, you might want a new piece of furniture or, you know, want to reimagine an entire living room say. Wayfair, uh, which provides such things, launched a free virtual room restyler called Decorify, using AI to create a room that you might want and then might buy. There are others. There's a site called Home Designs AI offering a similar feature, but uh, Decorify starts at $27 per month and offers Visualize AI, which isn't free, but offers style options and lets you enter items to include or exclude from the generated image. Maybe you just really don't like that coffee table type thing. A quick Google search says there are countless other apps and services offering uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, And they all want your money as well. So I don't know. What do we think of Decorify? Quick clarification here. The difference with Decorify, $27 a month is what home designs charges and the other ones charge. Decorify Ah. right now is free Ah. on Wayfair. So you are getting that thing that you would pay for otherwise, at least for now, uh, for free with the idea that Wayfair is hoping like maybe you'll just buy a few pieces of furniture from Wayfair and that'll make up the difference, right? 100%. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like the whole kind of like uh, uh, imagine your new room. Um, we've been doing this for 
some years now. And it never really, you know, all of the, uh, the, um, the tech, uh, is interesting, but I don't know anybody who's ever been like, you know what? I just put together my new home using Decorify. Maybe this will help. Um, yeah. but yeah. And it is working a little differently. Um, it's not letting you plop furniture down into your house. It shows you, uh, it shows you your room with exist. It doesn't show you your existing furniture. It's like removing your existing furniture. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a little better than that old Amazon thing where you're like awkwardly trying to place the couch in front of your own couch, <laughs> you know, and, and cover it up and all that. So it's a slight advance, I guess. I mean, this is clearly the way things are going to go, isn't it? We're all going to have these AI, VR, you know, different tools of buying things like rooms and furniture before you actually see it in real life, aren't you? We're going to see some of that already. And this just seems to me the kind of logical, you know, next, yeah, next but, step. You know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think IKEA does stuff like this now, doesn't it, as well? Yeah, that in Amazon, IKEA, they they've all been doing it. Uh, right. and so this is this is the next most advanced version of it. If you want to go try it out, check it out at Wayfair. Let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. This one comes from Jason, who wrote in response to the whole Samsung fire incidents. Jason says, Holy cow, I had totally forgotten about the fires and the recall that they had being Samsung. I had a coworker that had a model. Refused to turn it in. He did eventually, but it was right down to the line when Samsung was going to remotely shut them down. If I remember correctly, says Jason, they had been remotely throttle throttling back the battery, making them almost useless. And he still don't, he held on to it because he loved it so much. That's crazy. They hit, this is the Samsung Galaxy Note, if anybody doesn't remember. We were talking about that yesterday. Yeah. Uh, to, to uh, the, I know, I remember talking about some people who tried to hold on to them to the very end and Samsung had to remotely <laughs> disable them from the service. Uh, that is wild. And and the point of our conversation yesterday was that even with these note fires, uh, Samsung, people were predicting like Samsung's done. They won't be able, no one will ever trust them again. They won't be able to, to sell phones. Uh, turns out they're doing just fine. Uh, and there were even people yeah. like Jason's friend back then who like held on to their fiery notes until the bitter end. Well, and unpacked is, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday. Yeah, so, right. you know, Samsung doing quite well. In fact, you'll get a chance to see just where they are seven years after the Galaxy Note recall. <laughs> yes. uh, Jose also wrote in in response to WorldCoin. We talked about uh, Sam Altman's new WorldCoin venture yesterday. That's the one where you have to go in person to an appointment and have your iris scanned by an orb, uh, which is what WorldCoin calls it. We're not just being creepy when we say that. That's literally their word for it. Uh, Jose wrote... What is stopping me from paying some rando on Postmates to get their orbs and hand me the credentials to my new world account, which is now tied to a real world identity, and then use that for spamming, spoofing, and scamming? It seems to me that this is just a very long way to provide some false security to potential victims. Hmm. I'm guessing he pounded on the table after he said that. Yeah. Um, we should clarify, yeah. Jose. Mm -hmm. When we say identity verification, we weren't saying this is a identity in the sense of a driver's license. I, I admit that was probably confusing. Uh, it's just verification that you're a person, not a bot. So it's not identity like, oh, we can now prove who you are. It's you are a person. So the thing stopping you from paying some rando on Postmates is that they would have your account then. <laughs> and you probably don't want them to have your account because they're going to have to have your account logged in on their phone and all of that. Uh, and then if WorldCoin ever does get worth anything, they would have all that money. Uh, they would have access to all that money too. Uh, so this is not meant to stop people from impersonating other people. This is meant to stop bots from being able to, to game the system. And ha you have to have a human behind it. And and you yeah. and you would have to and, and yeah you could create multiple accounts if you had multiple humans but that's a lot harder to scale than bots. Right, right. I mean that's the whole orb point, right? Is that <laughs> who wants to go through the trouble? Yeah. Some someone will sure, 
you know, got a game a system, right? But uh, yeah. but otherwise, that's that's the idea is that people you know, always try, don't they? And we know, yeah, who you yeah. Are. And even if they did move into more identity, uh, you know, like personal identity oriented things, which they might, uh, there are other steps they could take to verify personal identities that you wouldn't want a separate person to be doing. Because again, then they would have the access to your account and you would not because you couldn't re-verify with your own iris. You'd have to have them do it every time. Well, Charlotte Henry, uh, iris is scanned or otherwise. We're very happy to have you on the show. Uh, let folks know where they can keep up with your work. I'm so pleased to be back and really excited that we were going to do uh, this regularly. So the main place is head over to theedition.net. Uh, if you look over on Amazon, you might also be able to find my book, Not Buying It. And then I'm at TikTok at Charlotte A. Henry, and you can find YouTube, The Edition, on YouTube as well. And just want me on Twitter while it survives. I'm at Charlotte A. Henry over there. Excellent. Uh, patrons, stick around for the extended show Good Day Internet. We've got an ongoing project with Astro the Robot. That's the Amazon robot with the camera that roams around your house. Uh, I tried it for around a month and it scared my dog to death. Uh, we've got a video up on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash daily tech news show uh, of me trying it out and installing it. And it's now gone to Roger's house, phase two. I dropped it off on Sunday. How has the robot dealt with a family of four? Stick around or become a patron to find out. Also, just a reminder, you can catch our show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We'll be back tomorrow talking about Samsung's Unpacked event with Android Faithful Zone, Quinn Tui Dao. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>